Okay, today I'm going to talk about brushes, creating custom brushes. Specifically, we're going to use letters to create brushes and use the um, letter brushes to paint our fruits and vegetables assignment. So the first thing I'm going to do is mask this banana out and try to get a good selection of it because we'll be using that selection to mask our painting. So this is a good uh, image to use our quick selection tool. Since it has a uniform white background, we should be able to just paint in here. And we're not really too worried about the selection. We're really just kind of using the shape. And we can always add to that shape if we want to. We're just trying to get a, something that looks like a, a banana. Now this is the background, so I'm going to hold down Shift-Command-I to invert that selection. I'm going to grab my Move tool, which is V for Victor. You'll see it turn into little scissors. And we're just going to drag this up here and drop it onto our main painting image, painting file. And I'm going to uh, <clears throat> hit Command J and duplicate that layer. Kind of use that for our reference file. And then I'm going to load this banana shape down here. Oops, wrong one. Command click the thumbnail that loads that selection. I'm going to grab my paintbrush. And then we'll just choose a color. Now when you have your paintbrush chosen, any brush really, Oops, switch to my brush. Uh, if you hold down option, you'll switch to your little eyedropper tool and we should be able to sample um, anywhere on our desktop. Okay, so we can sample the sample uh, reference banana up here so I can use that yellow or if you click in your document and then drag you should be able to come over here and select any color here in your window. We can sample this gray back here. We can come over and sample this blue from our panel. We can sample some of this red from our apple. Okay, and I'm just going to fill that, and the way I fill things would be, since we're filling with the foreground color, color I would just hit Option Delete. And all I'm looking for is a good base for my painting to start on. And then what I will do is I'm going to um, hold down Control, Option, Command, and click. That brings up our little window here to sample colors from. Or I could just hold down Option and come up here in our reference image and sample some colors. And we're just going to paint and we're going to turn the opacity back. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm just trying to rough in, scale some of that down. Remember by holding down Control Option and drag to the left, you're able to scale your brushes down. And right now, all I'm wanting to do is rough it in and kind of define where my dark areas are going to be. And I know from painting that our, as that light falls off that the foreground, the background, we're going to have kind of a uh, darkening of that yellowish color. Kind of paint up here and we'll sample some of this by holding down option. We'll sample some of that dark and just come in here, turn up the opacity a little bit, just brush in there a little. I'm going to come in here and kind of just skirt the bottom edge. Control option to scale my brush down. And we're just going to rough it in and kind of get it the way we want it. 
can always kind of play around with this. Bring some of that orange in. And you're just going to want to play, 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 paint, paint, paint until you get it the way you want it. Should be, should look fairly realistic if we can. We can scale it way up and just kind of click and put a big B in there. And in your final piece, I do want to see your letters um, defined in your image. So try to at least have an area where I can I can see what your shapes, your paintbrush looks like. And a good thing to do is just play around with opacity and just build up some of that. Um, color because then you'll kind of have some of that painterly effect in it just by applying some darker colors playing with the opacity And it's just a matter of going back and forth. If you put too much on, then you come in with a lighter color, paint it on. And I'm going to go with a little bit of white or lighter color in here just to add a little bit of contrast and kind of put some white highlight in there. Another cool feature within Photoshop is if you tap the R key, you'll get this little icon pop up, which is your rotate. So some of you are going to like to rotate your canvas so that you can paint left or right instead of up and down. So sometimes that's helpful. And we can hit R again and rotate it this way. And then if you ever want to get it back to where you were at, we can come down here. This is the tool within Photoshop and just double click that and that will reset our our tool. Alright, I'm just gonna kinda turn that off and then just um, go ahead and make it my own. So we're gonna create a new layer here. And then I'm just gonna paint in some brown spots or some black spots or whatever. I kinda have my colors set up here so we'll just paint them in. And they are my little bees so Probably want to alter them a little bit. Now this is where I could come in here and play with the spacing and play with my scattering. And just kind of click. Got my brush too big. So then we just kind of come in here and click areas real quick. And then 
we'll go back, turn that scatter off, and then I'll just kind of make some kind of make some black kind of marks on it. And I could hold down shift, so if we click and shift click, we'll kind of have a straight edge. So sometimes if you aren't real comfortable with drawing, you can shift and get a line to go the way you want to. Now, if you were using a tablet and we turn on some of these features, then we could just, if you just barely push, like a pressure sensitive tablet, if you just barely push, you'll get this nice thin line. If you barely push down on your tablet, if you really push, then you'll have the full size of your brush. So I always encourage students to try to get a pen tablet, like a pressure sensitive tablet eventually in their career, if you can. I know they can be expensive. But they are nice to have. They give you quite a bit of flexibility. A little dark for me, so we'll just soften it by putting more of that color over it. And I'll just put a few bees in there just to show you what my brush looked like. Just for fun. Alright, I'm going to go back to my mouse and I'm just going to put some highlights up here. Or not highlights, I just want it to be a little bit brighter up here. Down right here, Do a little more modeling. All right, all right. So then, once you have your painting done, I would like for you to create a new layer, and we'll call this our brush layer. We'll size our brush up by holding down Control Option. I'll choose black over here, turn that to black, and I'll just click, oops, turn the opacity up, I'll click once, that's my brush, and then I'll size it down a little bit, and I'll just kind of click and drag to show you what that brush looked like. All right, so that's what this assignment is all about, this exercise. I want you to Experiment. I want you to try to get as realistic on your brush as you can, or on your um, object as you can. Show me what that brush tip looks like on your actual artwork. So I want to have contrast. I don't want to have a lot of flat painting going on. And then in the end, show me your brush tip up here and the actual brush stroke. So it's as simple as that. Watch the video on creating brushes. I hope this video helps you. And I will see you down the road in yet another video tutorial.